Hello everybody. So we'll continue on the lecture about mortality and now we'll talk about mortality trends and causes of death. So let's just go to slide 96. This one is going to be a, a short lecture in relation to the causes of death. Let's just get there. So uh, the categories of diseases according to the World Health Organization are communicable diseases, non-communicable diseases, and injuries. And just to give an idea what uh, communicable diseases are, we have here a list of them. So bacterial, such as tuberculosis, viral diseases, such as measles, uh, protozoan diseases such as malaria, maternal conditions, lack of prenatal care, delivering somewhere besides a hospital, and seeking an unsafe abortion, these are all uh, factors associated with the chances of having communicable diseases. And pre, uh, perinatal conditions, those conditions surrounding birth, just before or just after birth are also conditions related to higher chances of having communicable diseases. So these uh, maternal conditions of all these issues uh, that people experience, that women experience when they are pregnant or having a baby, or even the, the conditions just before and after birth are related to to having communicable diseases, conditions that expose them to these bacterial, viral, or protozoan diseases. And also nutritional deficiencies are some of the factors associated with higher chances of having communicable diseases. And these are the overall numbers of causes of deaths, and this data here is from 2011 and here these diseases are classified by being non-communicable diseases or communicable diseases or in this case here injuries the communicable diseases are highlighted in gray and the non-communicable diseases are in white and these are the number of number of deaths in the world in 2011 in millions so we are here these diseases are pretty much ordered by the number of deaths in total that they had in 2011. So ischemic heart disease, 7 million deaths in 2011, stroke 6.2 million, lower respiratory infection 3.2, and so on. So you see that in more recent years, most of the deaths, they are caused by non-communicable diseases, as we discussed before in this chapter. And communicable diseases we see less of an incidence and uh, here in these other columns we have the top 10 death rates per 100,000 uh, people for high income countries upper middle income countries lower middle income countries and low income countries so here we have only uh, the top 10 for each one of these groups and um, so we have here like 4, 8, 10, the same thing for these ones here. And here we have the life expectancy at birth for both sexes. And as you would think, for high income countries, life expectancy for both men and women together is 80 years of age, and then it declines for the other countries. And among each one of them, we have this top 10, and the other cells are empty because they are not the top 10 death rates for each one of uh, these groups of countries. So what we see for high income countries, the highest death rates are exactly for diseases that are non-communicable, exactly the, the white cells, and for lower middle income countries and for low income countries, then you see some of the top 10 death rates being exactly communicable diseases, the ones highlighted 
in gray. For low-income countries, you really see really high rates of death for communicable diseases, in this case here, for example, lower respiratory infection, diarrheal diseases, HIV AIDS, malaria, tuberculosis, and so on. So you really see a different pattern of mortality among countries by, by income level in, in which the ones that are more high income and upper middle income, they have higher rates for non-communicable diseases and the ones in low-income countries, higher rates for communicable diseases. And these are the 10 leading causes of death in the world in 2012. Is, uh, ischemic heart disease, stroke, have the highest levels. And uh, you see also high levels for these other diseases here. But stroke and heart diseases are the ones killing most people in more recent years. And uh, this is just to show the number of adults and children estimated to be living with HIV in the world by all these different air regions of the world back in 2013. And then you see that most people with that condition are in Sub-Saharan Africa with 24.7 million adults and children estimated to be living with HIV AIDS. And the total in the world is around 35 million back in 2013. And uh, here it's an exercise that the World Health Organization did and which is um, presented in the textbook of our course. What they do, they just get, let's say that we have 1,000 people and that's just distributed these 1,000 people across the world based on the population size of low-income countries, middle-income countries, and high-income countries. So in this case here, pretty much 67.7% of the population in the world is um, concentrated in middle-income countries, 163 in low-income countries, and 15.9% in high-income countries. So if we have 1,000 people, we would distribute then 163 of them in this group of countries, 677 here, and 159 in high-income countries. And within these specific countries, uh, looking at the uh, incidence of diseases in each one of them, this would be the number of people dying for each one of these diseases out of 1,000. So 18 would die for low, lower respiratory infections in low-income countries, 13 would die for diarrheal diseases in low-income countries out of 1,000 people in the world. And since the population in middle-income countries is higher, so you see this bigger number. So 93 uh, would, would die for uh, ischemic heart diseases in middle-income countries out of 1,000 people in the world, 86 of stroke and other cerebrovascular disease out of 1,000 people in the world in 2008. And in high-income countries, most of the prevalence are, again, related to heart diseases, stroke, and uh, lung diseases. And heart disease, you would have 25 deaths in high-income countries out of 1,000 people in the world. So you see there's, uh, the, 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 the top um, conditions of death in low-income countries, middle-income countries, and high-income countries, they vary. In most of the people, because they are concentrated in middle-income countries, of course, they will you will see more deaths in those group of countries. And finally, the life expectancy at birth it has been improving in the world since 1950 to uh, 2100. So these are projections; they are expected to keep improving by 2100. This is data based uh, from projections from the UN. So the blue line here, the life expectancy at birth for the world. And then you see for the more developed regions, the, the blue line is higher than the overall average. 
the less developed regions below the, the world average in the least developed countries also lower rates but you see that everybody lower rates than the average and then the other groups as well and you see that uh, we see improvements in life expectancy at birth for all these different groups of countries and the differentials between them have been declining so here back in the 1950s this one here let's say like it's around 25 and then no sorry sorry um let's say a little above 35 and so let's say 37 to 65 so almost 30 years of difference in life expectancy and then here uh, we expect by 2100 the differentials to be only uh, a little over 10 years so around 12 years of difference and uh, so this was this topic about causes of death around the world and thank you very much